This man, at the young age of 24, became the youngest self-made billionaire in history. His entrepreneurial journey has moved with the speed and precision of a missile, fast, focused, and impossible to ignore. He grew up in a town built for nuclear secrets, interned at a tech unicorn at 17, dropped out of MIT at 19, and got a $4 million check before even choosing a company name. Within five years, his startup was powering autonomous cars, tagging military surveillance footage, and quietly training the world's most powerful AI models. At 28, he walked into Meta to lead their most secretive AI lab. Behind him lies a story of genius and innovation, of a person who has already shaped the history of American technology, and will continue to do so in the years to come. This is the entrepreneurial story of Alexander Wang. Alexander Wang's story begins far from Silicon Valley, in a high desert town with an extraordinary legacy. I grew up in this town called Los Alamos, where there's a there's a there's a national lab there. Um, did you watch Oppenheimer? Yeah. Yeah. So the so all the New Mexico shots in Oppenheimer, that's exactly where I grew up. Los Alamos is famously known as the place where scientists developed the first atomic bomb during World War II. For Wong, born in 1997, it wasn't just history, it was home. His parents worked as physicists at the Los Alamos National Laboratory, and young Alex grew up immersed in an environment brimming with scientific curiosity. Classmates' parents were rocket engineers, chemists, plasma researchers, everyday people solving cosmic problems. Imagine being a kid and hearing about nuclear fusion or star plasma over dinner. For Wong, this was normal, and it planted a powerful idea in him. Anything is possible through science and technology. From an early age, Wang showed an intense competitive streak, not on the sports field, but in the classroom. By his teenage years, Wang's talent in math and science was undeniable. He represented New Mexico in national math competitions and spent countless hours coding and learning beyond the standard school curriculum. During high school, his talent earned him the opportunity to gain his first experience in Silicon Valley. He moved to the Bay Area for a summer internship at Quora, a prominent Q&A tech company, working as a software engineer. It was here that he met Quora's CEO, Adam D'Angelo, a former Facebook CTO, who gave him a piece of advice that would soon prove prophetic. Four years of college is overrated, two is underrated. This advice lingered in Wong's mind as he headed off to college. Little did he know how directly he would act on it. In 2014, Alexander Wong entered the prestigious Massachusetts Institute of Technology, eager to dive into advanced computer science and artificial intelligence coursework. By all accounts, he was a stellar student. He even took graduate-level machine learning classes in his freshman year. But as much as Wong enjoyed MIT's intense academic environment, something else was pulling at him. In early 2016, a watershed event in AI occurred. In Seoul AlphaGo, the AI program developed by DeepMind, a British company acquired by Google a few years earlier, faced off against the world champion of Go, an ancient strategy game. Far more complex than chess, long believed to be too intuitive and human for any machine to master. Isn't Alpha right. Go, right? The event was followed by millions of people, taking on a symbolic role and representing the challenge between man and machine on completely oh, uncharted right. ground. It's just, a, just a habit. So it's not as if. DeepMind's Alpha Go, to everyone's surprise, defeated the world champion of the game Go for the first time, winning four games to one. This was more than just tech news for Wong, it was an epiphany. It showed that AI was advancing faster than anyone imagined. That spring, as AlphaGo's victory sunk in, 19-year-old Wong found himself made a gutsy decision. He would drop out of MIT after his first year. Armed with confidence in his coding skills and the encouragement of mentors, he flew straight from Boston to San Francisco to start building his own company. 
He didn't have a business plan, he didn't even have a name. But he had a conviction, if this is the future, I want in. So, just 19 years old and fresh out of his first year at MIT, Alex applied to Y Combinator, Silicon Valley's elite startup accelerator. Not with a polished product, but with curiosity, hunger, and a notebook full of half-formed ideas. In that same batch was someone he already knew, Lucy Guo, a fellow engineer he had met at Quora. Brilliant, intense, and just a couple years older, Lucy had also dropped out from Carnegie Mellon and was ready to chase something big. Together, they started talking, not about apps, not about social media, but about what AI actually needed to work in the real world. And that's when it hit them. Everyone was racing to build AI models, smarter algorithms, more compute, a better GPU. But they were all starving for something more basic, clean, labeled, high quality data. Alex remembered something he'd seen while working at Quora and in labs at MIT. Teams were building neural networks with incredible potential, but they were wasting weeks just labeling images, transcribing audio, or cleaning up messy data sets. That was the bottleneck. That was the overlooked problem. And that's where the idea clicked. What if we build the data infrastructure for AI? A company that wouldn't just support AI innovation, it would power it from the ground up. Inside the Y Combinator house, the idea that would become scale was born. They sketched out a vision, a platform that combined smart software with a global workforce of human annotators. People who could label data at scale, powered by tools that made the process fast, accurate, and efficient. They didn't know it yet, but they were building what would later be called the AWS of AI training data. The idea caught fire. Investors noticed. One of them, Dan Levine from Axel, met the young founders and was stunned by their clarity of thought. He didn't just write them a $4.5 million seed check. He offered them his basement as a temporary office. Scale AI was no longer just a concept. It was a company. And Alexander Wong, now without a degree, without a safety net, had just stepped into the unknown. So there's there's three ingredients that go into um, these AI models, or three pillars. So there's compute, of course, there's data, and there's the algorithms. And the history of AI is that uh, progress comes from sort of, you know, uh, all three of these pillars sort of being built all together. So, you know, you need, you certainly need a lot of computational capability, but you need the algorithmic advances, algorithmic advances like the transformer originally or RLHF or, you know, whatever future algorithmic advances come. Um, and then you need, you need the data pillar to support it as well. Scale AI's business model emerged as an AI data infrastructure platform. In plain terms, Scale would take the dirty work off its client's plate. The goal was to allow clients to focus on software and algorithm development, eliminating the need to turn mountains of raw data into polished training data sets for machine learning. Wang decided to hire and coordinated an army of human labelers around the world to tag images, annotate 3D sensor data, transcribe audio, whatever AI projects required. Those humans were assisted by Scale's own algorithms to work faster and more accurately, effectively scaling the data labeling work it was like building a data factory with people and machines together assembling the fuel that AI systems run on. The idea was clear, the premise were astonishing, but Alex still needed to start somewhere. At first, Scale AI zoomed in on one red-hot sector. Self-driving cars. Wang and Guo realized that autonomous vehicle startups were drowning in sensor data but lacked the manpower to label it. Scale swooped in to fill that gap. They're collecting more data by driving in real life, and then that's going to make them better. The amount of data that these sensors collect is pretty significant. Early on, they scored contracts with major players like General Motors Cruise, Uber's self-driving unit, and Waymo, Google's autonomous car project. In one case, a single deal with Apple's secretive self-driving program was worth over $10 million in data labeling work. 
At this point, Scale AI began introducing its tools to support workers and boost their efficiency. Soon, the company had a team of 15 people fully dedicated to building high-quality datasets for companies in the self-driving car industry that needed to train their vehicles. By solving a critical pain point, Scale AI quickly became indispensable to the self-driving industry. That same year, Scale AI began collaborating with the Pentagon by joining Project Maven, an initiative aimed at using artificial intelligence to quickly analyze large volumes of imagery and video collected by military drones. In other words, the goal was to automatically identify objects, such as vehicles, buildings, and people, in real time from UAV footage. Scale AI's role was, once again, to label the data and ensure that the machine learning models had the most accurate information possible to assist U.S. military analysts. As Scale AI's reputation grew, so did its client list, expanding beyond just vehicles. Pinterest, PayPal, Etsy, Toyota, and many others signed on for data services. By 2019, the company's annual revenue had surged toward $40 million. Venture capital investors poured fuel on the fire. In August 2019, none other than tech billionaire Peter Thiel's fund invested $100 million, pushing Scale's valuation past $1 billion and officially crowning it a unicorn startup. Astonishingly, just three years after its founding, Alexander Wong was running a company worth 10 figures. Alexander was still in his early 20s, hiring employees a decade older to work for him. But for him, it felt like the starting gun. If you are enjoying the story of the origins of Scale AI and his founder, Alexander Wang, please know that here in Vision Economy, you can find the Serial Entrepreneur Series playlist, where we publish constantly new videos about the most insightful stories about nowadays founders. That same year, Alex traveled to China, his ancestral homeland, and what he saw there changed everything. While Silicon Valley was still debating ethics and prototypes, China was already integrating AI into real-world infrastructure, surveillance, and military systems. The Chinese experts showcased impressive AI advancements, but were evasive about how those technologies might be used. We're at the dawn of a new age of warfare. I grew up in the birthplace of a technology that defined the last era of warfare, the atomic bomb. I was keenly aware of how this technology had fundamentally shaped geopolitics and the nature of war. This was a pivotal moment in Wang's thinking. Scale AI's mission broadened in scope. Keeping America's edge in AI became as important to him as landing the next big customer. Under his direction, Scale AI began taking on projects with the U.S. government. In 2022, the company secured its first Department of Defense contract, assisting the military in applying AI to analyze aerial images. Over the next few years, Scale would support efforts like damage assessment in war zones, helping identify buildings destroyed in the 2022 Ukraine conflict via satellite data, and even deploy a custom large language model nicknamed Donovan on secure military networks. For a young founder, these high-stakes partnerships were both an honor and immense pressure. The trajectory of a scale AI shifted. From just another Silicon Valley vendor into a strategic player in national security. The tension in Wang's story was no longer just startup versus competitors. It was increasingly about innovation versus geopolitical rivalry. By 2021, Alexander Wang had accomplished the unthinkable. At just 24 years old, thanks to successive funding rounds, his stake in Scale AI made him the world's youngest self-made billionaire. Forbes featured him in their 30 under 30 list and on international covers as the new model of tech wunderkind. To many, Wang's rise looked meteoric, a brilliant idea, hyper growth, and vast wealth all before age 25. But inside the company, Wang knew they were only getting started, he didn't want to just label data for others. He envisioned Scale AI as a long-term platform at the heart of the AI revolution. Meanwhile, another seismic shift was happening in the tech world, the rise of generative AI. 
Claude 3 is arguably now one of the most powerful AI models. OpenAI kickstarted the artificial intelligence arms race with the explosive debut of ChatGPT. By late 2022, models like OpenAI's ChatGPT exploded into public consciousness, heralding a new AI boom. Luckily for Scale AI, Wong's early bet on data infrastructure positioned his company right at the center of this boom. All those years of refining data pipelines now paid off as virtually every AI initiative, from chatbots to image generators, needed the clean labeled data and fine tuning. Scale AI's technology was used by OpenAI to help train ChatGPT, by Meta to curate data for their AI models, and by numerous others racing into the AI gold rush. The company launched new services to evaluate AI model performance and identify their blind spots, effectively becoming an AI quality assurance hub. Wang's vision of scale as the AWS of AI, a foundational service layer akin to Amazon Web Services and cloud computing, started to materialize. By late 2024, the frenzy over generative AI had reignited investor appetite. And as a consequence, in December 2024, Alexander Wong secured a deal. Scale AI raised $1 billion in new funding from a group of powerhouse backers, including Excel, Amazon, NVIDIA, and even Meta. The company's valuation nearly doubled to $14 billion, restoring Wong's status as a multi-billionaire on paper and silencing talk of any house of cards. This moment was more than just a funding round, it was validation. It proved that Wong's vision of data infrastructure was vital to the future of AI, and even the biggest tech companies were willing to bet on scale, rather than build everything in-house. Our data foundry today powers nearly every leading large language model, including those from OpenAI, Meta, Microsoft, and NVIDIA. Under the hood, Scale AI was now partnering on cutting-edge projects. From evaluating AI safety for the U.S. defense, to helping the Army implement AI in operations. Today, Alexander Wang is still only in his late 20s. He is the founder of a company that gives job to 700 plus person globally, that not only serves Fortune 500 firms, but also shapes government AI strategy. Scale AI has become the behind the scenes force accelerating AI development across healthcare, e-commerce, finance, transportation. Whenever you hear about a breakthrough AI model, chances are Scale's fingerprints are on it in the training data that taught that model how to see or speak. Wong has earned that seat at the table. He's briefed U.S. generals and policymakers on AI capabilities and even spoken at the World Economic Forum in Davos, warning leaders about the fierce competition in AI technology. But by 2025, the game had changed. Meta is paying nearly $15 billion for a scale AI stake. In June 2025, Meta, one of the giants he once watched from afar, invested $14.3 billion into scale AI, buying nearly half the company, specifically 49%. Scale had become critical infrastructure for the future of AI. Zuckerberg noticed it, and Wang? He didn't cash out, he stepped up. Leaving the CEO role, he joined Meta to lead their new superintelligence lab, an elite division tasked with building the next generation of artificial minds. Starting officially a new adventure, but keeping a set in the scale board. From a teenager annotating images on Quora to architecting military-grade AI infrastructure, and now shaping Meta's most ambitious AI efforts, Alexander Wong's journey has come full circle. He will undoubtedly be at the forefront of AI development in the years to come. And I promise you, this won't be the last time you hear about him. At just 28 years old, he's already helping shape the world we live in. And we're eager to see how he'll continue to do so, shoulder to shoulder with Zuckerberg. And now, if you found Alexander's story as inspiring as we did, hit that like button and subscribe for more founder documentaries.